Welcome to ETH Daily, a daily briefing on the latest in Ethereum. The US Treasury sanctions Tornado Cash, Circle freezes USDC on Tornado Cash tied wallets, Chainlink says they won't support Ethereum proof of work forks, and Starkware partners with Aspect. All this and more from ETH Daily starts right now. The U.S. Department of the Treasury's Office of Foreign Assets Control has sanctioned cryptocurrency mixer Tornado Cash. A list of associated addresses were also added to the agency's specially designated nationals and blocked persons list. The sanction prohibits U.S. persons and entities from interacting with the protocol or any of the associated addresses. The Treasury claims Tornado Cash has materially assisted cyber-enabled activity originating from outside the United States that is likely to be a threat to national security. The agency cited the protocol's use in illicit money laundering, including $455 million stolen by the Lazarus Group in the Sky Mavis hack. Since the announcement, Tornado.Cash and all GitHub repositories associated with the project have been censored. The UI for Tornado Cash can still be forked and made accessible through IPFS. Tornado Cash is a privacy protocol that allows users to facilitate anonymous transactions by depositing funds into a smart contract, which are mixed with all deposits and can be withdrawn to a new address without revealing the origin of the funds. Since launching in 2019, Tornado Cash has processed over $7 billion in all-time volume, most of which is not tied to illicit funds. Circle, the company behind the USDC stablecoin, has blacklisted more than 80 addresses associated with Tornado Cash. The blacklisted wallets include Tornado Cash smart contracts for USDC deposits. So far, more than 75,000 USDC belonging to Tornado Cash users, as well as 149 USDC donated to the project, have been frozen. The USDC token contract contains a blacklist address function that when enabled, prevents an address from being able to move USDC tokens. Blacklisted addresses are also prevented from being able to receive USDC. Circle CEO Jeremy Allaire has previously failed to acknowledge the company's ability to freeze assets as a centralized stablecoin issuer. Circle Pay is yet to release a statement on the freezing of assets. Decentralized Oracle provider Chainlink announced that it will not support forked versions of Ethereum amid the upcoming merge upgrade, including any proof-of-work forks. Chainlink said it will remain operational on Ethereum's proof-of-stake consensus layer post-merge. The decision comes in alignment with the Ethereum Foundation and broader Ethereum community. A hard fork would result in two separate tokens post-merge, Digital Currency Group CEO Barry Selbert is opposed to the hard fork and advises miners to use their resources on the existing Ethereum Classic proof-of-work chain instead. Ethereum developers who are unsure of their migration strategy during the migration are advised to pause smart contract operations during the upgrade. Vitalik Buterin has proposed the idea of a stealth address ERC721 token standard. The standard would provide privacy for NFTs by allowing users to send NFTs without revealing the receiving address. A sender creates a random, one-time address for each transaction on behalf of the recipient. Stealth addresses allows multiple transactions made to the same wallet to be unlinkable. Buterin shared the idea in response to an Ethereum research post for an ERC721 extension for ZK Snarks. And lastly, Starkware announced a developer partnership with Aspect, the first NFT marketplace to launch on StarkNet mainnet. Aspect has built a StarkNet NFT API that allows developers to build NFT experiences with the project's infrastructure. The Aspect API is a REST-based API and provides NFT data on StarkNet. It provides a set of endpoints that enable developers to fetch ERC721 and ERC1155 token metadata, as well as assets, events, contracts, and other core attributes. This has been a roundup of today's top news stories from ETH Daily. You can support this podcast by subscribing and leaving a review on Apple Podcasts. Also subscribe to our newsletter at ethdaily.substack.com. Thanks for listening. We'll see you tomorrow.